Women cheated on me in the past, not sure about the present. This is a purely fictitious account for reasons that will become clear later. I'm getting married in a few of days, and you might say that I'm having difficulty telling the difference between what's genuine and what isn't. I'm at a loss on where to turn to explain my predicament. Over the course of my life, I've been in love with three different ladies. With the exception of my fiancé, the two ladies who cheated on me, destroyed my heart, and betrayed me were both married. The town where I was raised was a medium-sized one, a college town with a population of between 10 to 15,000 people. It's important to note that I didn't have a very close connection with my parents or siblings when I was younger. Soon after graduating from high school, I moved out on my own and secured an apartment. Being self-sufficient has always been a dream of mine. In addition, I've always sought to establish relationships with other individuals. It's possible that my stressful familial circumstances explains why I want a family more than anything else in life. But it has only been in the past year or so that I have been in a state of mind where I can entertain the prospect of doing so backstory. During the Great Recession, I conclude my undergraduate studies. When I was completed, I was aimless and worked two jobs at the same time. When I was younger, everyone told me that if I wanted to have any kind of profession, I would need a master's degree. As a result, I worked ships in a warehouse during the day and also performed landscaping on the side. And at night, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm putting in the hours to get my graduate degree. I met a female who was considerably older than me with the help of some other classmates. Let's name her Anna for the time being. Anna was a small woman who was half American and half Thai. She enjoyed classical dance and art history, and she was half American and half Thai. I was 23 at the time, and she was approaching her 30th birthday. She was interested in all of the topics that I was interested in. We met into one other on campus a couple of times, and we also ran into each other at pubs where we would have a good time chatting. Every now and then, we would go out to the country and smoke pot while listening to music. I was under the impression that our connection would be limited to a friendship. I mean, she was really stunning, and I'm just an ordinary-looking guy. Looking back, it seems naive, but at the time, it seemed smart in some ways. That persons in their 30s were able to provide solutions to significant questions. We developed a love connection over the course of many months after the beginning of our acquaintance. I had always been over over heels in love with her, and I believe I had successfully persuaded her to feel the same way about me. We'll name her Erin, and she was five at the time I began dating Anna. Anna had a kid, and we'll call her Erin. Her biological father had abandoned the family and had relocated to a different state. So her early conceptions of family reminded me of my own, or, to put it another way, I could identify to what she was going through. I made it my personal mission to be as near to a father as I possibly could be. A family was something I desired, and I wanted Anna and Erin to be a part of that family as well. And for roughly three and a half years, it felt like a family. In time, I established a schedule in which I went to work, came home for lunch, and then returned home after supper. I spend my time with Erin, reading her books, and generally trying to be the best I can be. Evidently, I was a lot more conventional than I had previously believed myself to be. In the end, I informed Anna that she could remain at home and that I would be able to work at my two jobs while finishing school. Sometimes, while lying in bed, we would daydream about our futures and the wonderful things that might come our way. Perhaps I'm looking back on this with a sentimental eye, but those years and those memories stand out to me as years of absolute happiness. Anna and I continue to drink, smoke, and have a good time together. We had conflicts and disagreements, just like any other relationship, and we had good days and terrible days. So, as I already said, my life was fulfilling. Later on, my next-door neighbor Evan, who lived across the street and often came in and out of our home since we had an open-door policy, came to see us. As a result, Evan would often come into the house and help himself to several joints that were wrapped up in an old cigar box. And me and Anna were given an open welcome to his home, so if we wanted anything, such as booze or peanut butter, we could just stroll over there and get it. So, one day during my lunch break, I get a text from Evan informing me that he was about to open the front door when he saw Anna and one of my best friends kissing. 
Evan said that no. Nope. One had seen him. Let's call the man she was kissing John since that's what he went by. Despite the fact that he was small and unattractive, John hailed from an affluent family and was ready to complete his medical degree when we met. It took him around two hours to go to his home, which was about two hours away in a much bigger metropolis. Whether he was lonely or just didn't establish any acquaintances in the city, he appeared to take great pleasure in making the rare journeys into town, which occurred once or twice a month at the very least. So I contacted John and inquired as to whether or not he would be going home this weekend. I'm working on it, but it won't be ready until later this evening, he said. I emailed Anna and asked if she would mind cooking something for us all to eat that evening. And then I casually said, Oh, did you know that John's coming in tonight? I had no idea what she was talking about. She behaved as if she was astonished, as if she didn't know what she was talking about. After all, I was approximately an hour away, and it was customary for me to not arrive at my house until 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening. I informed the warehouse supervisor that I had to leave early due to a family situation and that I would be back later. On the way home, I examined the possibility that Evan, who is neither the most dependable or the most sober person I know, may have made a genuine mistake and apologized. Afterwards, I texted, Well, is there another vehicle in the driveway besides Anna's? I described the appearance of John's automobile. Evan responded by texting me that, in fact, Anna's vehicle is the only one in the driveway. At first, I was concerned, but as I got closer to the home, I started to giggle, thinking Evan must have been high or had just caught a glimpse of something. A call from Evan arrives around seven miles away. He informs me that the automobile of the same make and model that I described was parked across the street on the other side of the street, which Evan would have spotted from the angle of his front yard. I contacted John and Anna to let them know that I could be running a bit late this evening and that they should prepare supper without me if I don't return before dark. Yeah, I'll probably be getting in just a little bit before you, John said via text message. Anna responded by text message, saying, That's fantastic, I'm just tidying up the home. Evan and I walked around the back of the building. As soon as I opened the door, the two of them bolted out. Everyone was yelling at the same time. I attempted to take a swing at John, but I failed miserably. He smacked me in the face and I fell to the ground, hitting my head on the wall. Evan followed down John and beat him up quite badly in my driveway, where I was watching. Evan was taken into custody by the police not long after they arrived. As a result, I felt awful since I didn't have the money to bail him out at the time, and I apologized to him the next day. He assured me that I shouldn't be concerned. In fact, it came out that John and Anna had been messaging and contacting each other while I was at work for the previous few months. I assumed she believed he was a more secure long-term investment, financially speaking, than she did. We had a falling out. We both decided to relocate. She moved in with John, and I believe their relationship lasted just a few of months in total. It probably took me a year to really recover from the experience, including the betrayal, the lying, and the deceit. In the end, I returned to my hometown and began seeing a lady named Alex, whom I had known since high school. In actuality, I was far more in love with her than she had ever been with me at any point in time. During our two-year relationship, we also lived together for over a year and a half. After a while, she received an offer for a position in Colorado. She would be earning about twice as much as she was earning where we were living. In any case, Alex terminated the relationship by stating, I don't believe our relationship can be sustained with us being so far apart from one another. I expressed my interest in finding work in the area, but she advised against it since she wanted to start again from the beginning. Do you remember Evan from earlier in the week? What about the man I had faith in and felt had become a good friend? Well, approximately a year ago, I discovered a great deal about him. A mutual buddy introduced me to the man who used to sell pot to me and Evan when I was drinking at a local pub and the rest is history. The topic of Evan being arrested came up at some point during the chat, and we all had a good chuckle over it. I expressed myself in a positive manner, Evan, on the other hand, was a wonderful person. He didn't even raise an eyebrow when I informed him that I was unable to pay the bond sum since I lacked the necessary funds. And the guy gave me a strange look, saying, he said, dude, 
I assumed you'd hate Evan since he banged both Anna and Alex, which I thought was funny. Evidently, none of my close friends or anybody else had informed me that Evan had been having relations with Anna even before John came to the party. And the reason he assaulted John that night and didn't seem too angry about the fact that I couldn't bail him out was because Anna and John were dating and I stopped sleeping with Evan at the time. As a result, it had absolutely nothing to do with his being a close friend or even like me. Moreover, it found out that when Alex relocated to Colorado, she continued to meet someone from our hometown who turned out to be Evan. In reality, she had been having contact with Evan throughout the time we were together. This knowledge was overwhelming, and it took me months to process it all. Prior to meeting my fiancé, the only two women I had ever felt I'd really loved had both lied to me and cheated on me. Even worse, everyone around me was aware of this, with the exception of myself. I can't tell you how embarrassing and debilitating this experience was for my mental health. Consequently, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with the fact that you will be getting married in a few of days? Take today, for example. Who do I see at the rehearsal dinner for the wedding? Evan. He arrived with a colleague of my fiancé's from work. It comes out that she is acquainted with Evan. Despite the fact that my wife and Evan work at different branches of the same bank that are about 30 miles away, they all work together. Maybe this comes out as paranoid, but I know what you guys are thinking. Is it crazy for me to assume that it's possible that my fiancé had an encounter with Evan? I realize that this seems completely insane, but Evan has slept with every woman I've been in a serious relationship with for the last 15 years, with the exception of this one. I don't believe he's aware of my knowledge of Anna and Alex's whereabouts. In addition, he didn't seem to be uncomfortable in my presence. Moreover, it was pleasant to speak with him, and I am not really concerned about events that occurred years ago. While there is no link between him and my fiancé other than the fact that he is dating her friend and that they both work for the same regional bank, there is a part of me that believes there is some possibility that he will or has already assaulted her. To be clear, I do not have any proof to support this claim. In reality, I do not believe she would or has done so but I think I've been traumatized by the past and can't seem to shake the notion that it may be true in the future. As you can guess, I can't tell anybody about my hidden dreads since I'm afraid they'll think I'm crazy because it seems so my rationale for this is that everything is in my brain, and I'm simply scared and frightened about the wedding. I'm also worried that if Evan had an affair with my fiancé, it would be too much for me to stomach. The world that I believed in, on the other hand, has been brought crashing down by the weight of its own reality in the past. Anyway, a large part of this was just the writing process itself, and it has been therapeutic to get things down on paper. I simply have a lot of problems with love and betrayal that have accumulated over the course of my life. However, I'm sure there are folks who have been cheated on several occasions who could provide me with some insight into whether or not I'm reading too much into coincidences or whether I'm simply being paranoid about everything. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to read this and for any useful suggestions you may provide. Update. Wow, the flood of support that I received this morning took me completely by surprise. I wasn't expecting to get that many responses. To be quite honest, I didn't anticipate receiving any responses. Thank you very much for your help. I'm going to inform my fiancé about this history later. Tonight, when we have a conversation, I believe I was overthinking things and becoming a bit worried at the time. You've made a significant difference in my thinking. The last thought. If anything goes wrong, I pledge to come back here and update this article immediately. Hopefully, everything will go well, and I will be able to marry the ladies I really like and avoid having to replay the events of the past. Once again, thank you to everyone in attendance. It was quite beneficial to me. It means a great deal to me.